Do you actually know the difference between a dynamic EQ and a multiband compressor? For the longest time, I thought they were basically the exact same tool. A dynamic EQ functions like an EQ, but it also has different aspects that are just like a compressor, like an attack and release setting. And a multiband compressor acts just like a compressor, but you have control over different regions of the frequency spectrum, just like an EQ. So what are the actual differences and when should you use one over the other? That's exactly what we're going to talk about today. Hey there, friend. It's Bobby Balo, the mixing and mastering engineer at Raytown Productions. And this channel is dedicated to helping you make better sounding music without needing to buy expensive gear or unnecessary plugins. If you're new here, be sure to hit that subscribe button because I drop new videos every single week to help you level up the quality of your music. And because we're talking about dynamic EQs, multiband compressors, a lot of people might not have those tools. So if you're interested in downloading some really good free ones that I recommend, I have a free downloadable guide that has all of my favorite free mixing and mastering plugins. There's a link in the description. So if you just need some new plugins to get a little bit more inspiration, or you wanna use the same tools that I'm using, definitely go and download that free guide. All right, so let's talk about the fundamental difference between a dynamic EQ and a multiband compressor. The first fundamental difference is the way that the dynamic EQ in a multiband compressor actually lowers the gain of that selected region. Dynamic EQs lower it just by pure level, and multiband compressors will actually lower it based on a defined ratio. The ratio is just like what you normally see for any old compressor, so it's going to shrink the amount it goes over a set threshold by that ratio. So for example, if you have a two to one ratio, two decibels over the threshold will be reduced down to one. If your ratio is four to one, then four decibels will be reduced down to one decibel. So what does that mean for your music? It means that these two tools have fundamentally different sounds. The multiband compressor is gonna have more of a movement characteristic to it, kind of a spongy, bouncy sound, whereas the dynamic EQ is gonna be very sterile, surgical, and really useful for fixing audio problems. Doesn't really add a lot of vibe, it's kind of bland. The next difference between a dynamic EQ and a multiband compressor is actually how the different bands are split up within the plugin. Dynamic EQs don't split the frequencies into different bands, whereas the multiband compressor does. Just having a multiband compressor on your track is gonna cause dramatic phase shift at each one of those bands. Unless, of course, you put it in linear phase mode. So let me just give you an example. Okay, I'm using a tool called Plugin Doctor to look to see what's happening underneath the hood of these plugins. So, I just have two examples here. This one is C6 by Waves, and this is F6 by Waves again. Uh, this is a dynamic EQ. This is a multiband compressor. So if we look here, we're getting a plot of the change in the frequency spectrum, okay? So we're not really seeing any changes here. So it's totally flat. It's not changing the frequency response at all. I have C6 muted right now. So let's look at the change here. So if we adjust the band, we can see the frequency response matches what's happening on the plugin. Okay, perfect. What if we look at the actual phase response, the change to the phase as we do this? And with all these bands activated, you see there's no change to the phase. And if we use the dynamic EQ and we start doing changes, we're getting changes to the phase. And this is totally fine. This is exactly how a normal EQ works. Okay, you, it, it works by phase shift. Now, on the other hand, let's mute this now. So now, if we look at a multiband compressor, and we'll start with frequency. Again, we have no real change of the frequency response. If we go in here and start doing compression, let's say in this region or in here, you see it's attenuating the frequency response. Totally okay. Now let's look at the phase response. Look at this. This is where it gets crazy, right? Even if we bypass every single one of these bands, notice there's no change in the phase response. So we're getting complete phase flips at each of these different uh, boundary locations for these bands. So if you shift them, you see the phase shift frequency actually shifts with it. So even if it's bypassed, 
you're causing major inversions of the phase. So normally that isn't really an issue if this is on like the like on a group bus or something like that because we're not really sensitive as human beings to hearing the phase shift. But if the phase is linked, meaning if you put a multiband compressor on like a kick drum and that kick drum sound is also recorded in overheads and things like that, you're going to get some major cancellation problems from this phase shift. Okay, so that's just an important consideration to think about. And I really haven't seen any videos that talk about this. I want to show one more quick thing. Here's another multiband compressor, and this is by FabFilter. This is the Pro MB. Now, if we add a bunch of bands to this multiband compressor, by default, right, it's going to split the frequency range, and so it should add all these crossover frequency points. Okay, but check this out. If we come over to the phase, and we add more of these bands, we're not changing the phase response, right? So what is happening? Let me show you. Down here, and this is why FabFilter Pro MB is pretty amazing. You have multiple different options for how you want this, these filters to, to be into sound. Okay, Minimum phase is just a typical normal filter. Okay, This is what most multiband compressors operate on. So here are all those phase inversions, right? Dynamic phase is a hybrid between just standard normal phase filters and a linear phase filter. So in the dynamic phase, you're going to get kind of the best of both worlds where you don't get these crazy phase shifts. And at the same time, you're also going to minimize pre-ringing, which is something that happens when you use linear phase filters. And this... That is beyond the scope of this video, but it's just something I wanted to point out. So linear phase operates the same way, right? We don't see any phase shift, but now you might be experiencing what's called pre-ringing. Just wanted to point that out that not all multiband compressors suffer from this phase shift problem, if it is a problem. So if you don't want to worry about phase shift, be sure to choose a multiband compressor that has a linear phase option. So the Dynamic EQ will technically have a more transparent sound to it. Now, whether you can actually hear the phase shift induced by these multiband compressors is up for debate, but I'm willing to bet if you use it on a channel that has phase-linked audio, like a drum kit or multiple mic guitar cabinets, you might run into some phase issues. And finally, the last difference between a multiband compressor and a dynamic EQ basically breaks down into the functionality of the dynamic EQ itself. Typically, dynamic EQs have way more bands than a multiband compressor, and they can also get a lot more narrow. Again, this goes back to its usefulness as a tool for correcting audio, whereas multiband compression is typically better for sculpting or just trying to maintain a certain sound overall. So when should you use a dynamic EQ versus a multiband compressor? The main deciding factors you need to ask yourself are what are the range of frequencies you want to affect, how much attenuation do you want to do? And do you want to be adding in movement or vibe to the track? If you're working with smaller ranges of frequencies or you have a very specific problem you're trying to fix, probably a good idea to use a dynamic EQ for that. Like I mentioned before, those narrow bands are really useful for that type of work. On the other hand, if you're just looking to lock in the low energy of a track, for example, a multiband compressor might be the answer. Typically, this is a larger frequency range, and also the low end sounds really pleasing if you can dial in a really nice sense of movement. Multiband compressors also sound really good, in my opinion, on group tracks or submixes. So now let me pull you into an actual session so I can show you exactly what these different tools sound like. So the session I have today is by a band called Deer Spring, and this song is called Gold Walls. It's a track I mixed and mastered, so if you like what it sounds like, definitely go and check out the band. I have a link to all of their social media stuff in the description. So I'm just going to give you a quick sample of the sound, and then we'll jump into how to use a dynamic or a multiband compressor. Here we go. So it's a big rock track, big drums, but there's some problems that I'm hearing right away. And the first thing is with the vocals, it's a little bit sibilant, right? 
if we go ahead to the verses. So the T's and S sounds are a little bit bright, and you could use a de-esser, uh, but let's use Waves F6. So again, this is a dynamic EQ. And what we want to do is find those sibling frequencies and then lower our threshold so that at any time is a bright sound that jumps out of the mix, it's going to attenuate that. So let's do that now. So we can use a dynamic EQ just like a normal EQ, right? And we'll boost frequencies until we find where we're really exciting the sibilance. So right around here, okay? So we don't want to add any gain to that. So let's bring this back down to zero, but let's pull this threshold back now. And then we also need to bring the range down. Okay, the range is going to tell us how much it's actually going to attenuate the signal. And then we want to set the threshold so it's just activating on the sibilant parts. The truth or a convenient lie. Cool. And because it's a sibilance thing, we can really pull the attack down to really be aggressive with it and grab that bright sound right away without it getting too harsh. But if you want a little bit more natural sound, you're going to want to roll this attack back a little bit and let some of the brightness come through naturally and then clamp down on it. Reach it to the zenith for the truth or a convenient lie. So right around here sounds pretty good. I'm going to open up the Q to make it a little bit wider. And that is going to grab more of those harsh frequencies. Cool. So that sounds a lot smoother to me. So that is a great use case. If we were to use a multi-band compressor, we'd get a similar sound to it, but we're not going to have as much control over those specific problem frequencies, okay? So you could probably use a multi-band compressor in that case, but the dynamic EQ, I think, just works a lot better. Let's check out the drums. And specifically the cymbals. So the hi-hats have a little bit of like this like ringy thing going on. Let's see if we can attack that. Yeah, right and hit this range. that it's like a honkiness to it right all right so now we're going to set our threshold let's bring the gain back down to zero now that we found the frequency range pull this range down to attenuate and then let's make the Q a little bit sharper so a higher number that's going to be a little bit more surgical we don't want to have the symbols swelling and changing frequencies a lot. We just want to hone in on that, that annoying frequency range, that, that small window around 1.4K, and just tuck that in. I'm going to be a little bit aggressive here so you can hear the difference, okay? So let me pull this range down. So this is with it in. So when it's bypassed, it's like it has this like <laughs> sound to it. It's like honkiness. This I'm terrible at making sounds, okay? Just gotta give me a pass on this one. <laughs> but you probably notice it's really transparent, right? 
And that's the beauty of the dynamic EQ. It's sterile, it's kind of boring, but if you need to fix something, it works so, so well. And the dynamic nature of this doesn't change the tone overall, right? It's just helping to tuck some of the stuff that builds up on these cymbals. Amazing. Let's check out the room. All right, let's use an F6 again, and let's try to target the ring of the snare. Right there, the snare, this is where this energy is really excited in the room. Now, normally you'd come in here if you were fixing a snare ring, just you'd notch it with an EQ, but that's gonna suck out frequencies from the room that we like, right? It's kind of cool to have this low mid warmth. So let's use the dynamic EQ, set this to zero again, and then we're just going to set our range and threshold to pull that ring out of the snare. And there's another spot that's kind of annoying right around here. And it seems to ring pretty long. So let's let's do the same strategy. We're gonna pull it down to zero, set our threshold and set our range low to kind of pull that out when it's ringing. Okay, bypass this. So it just cleans up that honkiness, gets rid of some of that ring. Sounds awesome. So where would you use something like a multiband compressor? My favorite spot for something like that is actually on the master bus. This is FabFilter Pro MB, awesome multiband compressor. So let's say I wanna lock in the low end, add a band here, we can adjust the region. We can solo just this low region. So try to find a spot where the kick drum and the bass are, are playing together, like right here. Perfect. Now I can set the attack slower so that the kick drum energy comes through, and then it pulls the low end down so that it's squeezing the bass guitar. And that's gonna help build in definition between the kick and bass a little bit and really lock in the low end. Okay, And we could be aggressive with this, right? And the other cool thing about the multiband compressor, again, is the release character of this, right? So you'll hear when the kick drum is hitting on the quarter notes for this part, the low energy is, is vibing and bouncing, right? You can see it in the release of just this. Queen, all it takes is the smallest part. So right there, you can just hear, it just helps to glue in that low energy and lock this track in. Another cool spot is on bass guitars. So if we quickly go to bass, let's use Wave C6 for this. I love Wave C6, I use it on my vocal chain all the time. So I'm gonna bypass everything except for this bottom band here. And I just want this to squeeze together all the low energy, okay? Set our threshold. So this is keeping the nice articulate top crunchy top end, but keeping the low energy in check. So I'm gonna adjust the range because I, I feel like it's being a little bit too aggressive with the low energy. What this is doing is you can see it adjusting in real time. It's just keeping the bass frequency perfectly consistent, okay? So as you get the strumming, that low energy in a subwoofer or on a, a bigger speaker system is gonna sound more even instead of having these big swells from every pick on the pick attack, okay? Perfect use for a multiband compressor.
So what do you typically reach for when you're mixing music? Do you use a dynamic EQ or do you use a multi-band compressor more? And when will you choose to use one over the other? I'm really curious to hear your thoughts. Please leave me a comment below. As a reminder, if you want a free downloadable PDF that has all of my favorite free plugins, including some really awesome multi-band compressors and a dynamic EQ, definitely go and grab that download in the description. If you found this video helpful, please share this with a friend or post it on a social media group like Facebook or Reddit. There's a good chance there's other people in the world that have the exact same questions, so you'll be helping them as well. And with that, I want to thank you so much for your time and attention today, and I hope to see you in another video.